Hi, my name is Adam Cortell. I'm your host on Garden Chatter. Welcome to Garden Chatter, where we bring gardeners, bloggers, experts together so we all can learn and grow. I'm really excited about this show. We have a special guest joining us. And, Bren, do you want to go ahead and introduce her? Um, sure. I, I'm really excited, too, because she's one of my favorite personalities to follow on Instagram, as, as well as Twitter and Facebook. But your Instagrams, Nancy, just rock the house. They are so inspiring. And um, I'm going to let Nancy Wallace, thank you for joining us, tell us where we can find you on your website. Hi, Bren. Hi, Adam. It's great to be here. Um, I'm sort of all over uh, social media, but I seem to hang out mostly on Instagram uh, under Wallace Gardens, and of course I've got a Facebook page, Nancy Wallace Gardens. I'm on Twitter. My Twitter uh, is at Sassy Nancy, um, and I, I like using Instagram and, and Twitter because they're so interconnected. It allows me to do many blog posts, and when I'm out working in the field, that's about all that I have time for. I love it. Wow. Sassy Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> that means my that <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Okay. We've got quite a what? few people tweeting tonight, Adam. I think maybe we should explain if they're new to the garden or to the uh, Google Hangouts um, where they can connect with us. Yeah. Well, I, one thing I think I did a tweet at uh, mm -hmm. hashtag garden chatter so if they went and just looked for that they could find a link um, to the event page and then once they get to the event page they can go ahead and click right on the screen on the little video embedded video player button. yeah the arrow button and that'll <laughs> bring them right in as an audience member and then they can enable the question and answer box by going up on the top right of their screen and they'll see a little uh, like a little box with a 3x3 three three, uh, grid on it and they can click that and enable the question and answer then they'll be able to input um, questions or comments and we'll see them in here and then we can acknowledge them and give shout outs and it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. Awesome. Well I just pulled a bunch of plants out of my van because uh, coincidentally <laughs> I'm in the middle of doing some Christmas garden planters so I just um, quickly cleared some space behind my desk so that I could have things at hand about some of the things that I'm using right now for Christmas planters that are hardy here in Zone 7 and probably hardier more north of me. I just don't have um, all that information about how hardy these plants are the further north we go. And I know some of you guys are in some pretty cold zones up there where it's much chillier than it is here in uh, Sewanee, Georgia. Chillier? <laughs> It's colder. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it was pretty warm here today. We got up to uh, 63. So I don't wow. know, maybe we it was kind of balmy. There's a storm coming in, though. It's going to change. And where um, are you, Adam? I'm in Talent, Oregon, in southern okay. Oregon. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, Nancy, why don't you take a moment or just a couple minutes and tell a little bit about what you're up to and, you know, what you do. I know you uh, do some really amazing garden design. Um, maybe you could just share a little bit about how you got there and what you're up to. Sure. Well, I, I had a garden retail shop before the recession, and as a result of the recession, uh, that business went away, and so I restarted my garden design services. So I actually work out of my house. I don't work for a nursery, although I do a lot of shopping with uh, independent garden centers, and I have some favorite nurseries, and uh, I do as much business with my local nurseries as I can, and uh, I do probably about 300 container gardens a year, maybe more. I think it's, it's well above that now. I've got a lot of repeat clients who have anywhere from a dozen to 20 planters, and twice a year in the spring and again in the fall, I'll replace the plant materials. I just finished doing all of the um, autumn containers, and I bury lots of bulbs, tulips, hyacinths, daffodils, those kinds of things that will pop up next, next spring. So I've got those behind me. I'm doing some landscape installations and renovations right now and some Christmas planters and I've got a few clients who have ordered some terrariums for gifts as holidays. So 
a lot of this gets done on my my back porch, my back deck, and out of the back of the van sometimes. <laughs> so my hands are always busy this time of the year. It's a lot of fun. Sounds like it. Well, you shared some photos with us. Why don't we go ahead and um, look at some of those, and you can give a little commentary and discussion yeah. as we as we dive through those. So let me just go ahead and share the screen here. It's so exciting to see your pictures. They are just beautiful, gorgeous. Thanks, mm -hmm. I've got a lot of great resources. That always helps. Nice. Gardening is a lot like cooking. If you have good ingredients, you're going to be set to go. Yeah. Ah, that's a summer planter, yes, with some coleus and those great torch begonias there that are just dripping with uh, flowers. And I've got some silver foliage, some um, um, dusty miller in there, and some silver brocade artemisia. And uh, that's a licorice plant that's coming out on the side there. Uh, lots of fun foliage combinations with um, some summer begonias. Those begonias just grow like crazy in the summertime in this part of the country. A good workhorse for container gardens. Yeah, it looks great. Go ahead and... Whoops. Let's see if we can stay there. There we go. <laughs> and that's one of my uh, new favorite Christmas plants with the red berries on it. It's called uh, Galtheria or uh, Winter Creeper, Winter Green. It's evergreen here in Georgia, and it's a ground cover for the shade, although in the wintertime I use it in full sun in um, flower beds as well as container gardens. It's just, it gets these gorgeous bronze colors on it. The berries last for weeks and weeks. And um, one of my favorite new perennials to use both outside in the landscape as well as in container gardens this time of year. Wow. Do you happen to know um, what zone can that what the, what's the hardiness zone in that? I'm not sure, Brent. I'll have to look. Okay. It's um, gorgeous. It's at least zone seven, and oh. I actually I have a plant right here. Should you want me to? Want me to <laughs> it's one of my <laughs> that I pulled up out the tag. of the van, <laughs> and maybe they'll tell us the zones here on the tag. Uh, oh, here we go, zone four to seven. So that's hey. I'm uh, gonna look for one of those. That's gorgeous. Yeah. And it has edible berries on it, edible ah. ripe berries. So wow. this is um, a good plant if you're trying to do an edible garden. And I've, I've got a couple of clients now who are trying to do edible plants in their garden. The bad news is that the deer might eat it. So you got to be careful. But, um, yeah, this is a uh, Galtheria procumbens. And uh, the plant tag says zones 4 to 7 to minus 30. So that should cover wow. just about everybody, don't you think? Totally. And, um uh, Last year here in Georgia, we had some really unusual uh, weather down into the single digits for days on end, and this plant did fine. I mean, when they're covered with ice and snow, they actually are sort of insulated from those cold winds and things, so they mm -hmm. tended to come through just fine with nary a burned leaf or anything, which is nice. what I say for some other plants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's a good one. That's a, that's a keeper, that plant. Totally. All right. Well, here's another one. Are you seeing uh, yes. One? Yeah. That's oh, one of gorgeous. the uh, Christmas planters that I just yeah. finished up there. And uh, you've got some uh, real uh, red winter berries. It's one of my favorite um, winter plants for a shade garden. And if you're lucky enough to have red winter berries in uh, your own garden, you can go out and clip on that bush yourself this time of year. It's loaded with berries if you can grab those branches before the birds get to them. And uh, I like to, it, sometimes some nurseries will carry branches of those as well. So you can go in and buy bunches of them and stuck, stick them into the, your container planters with uh, boughs of pine or uh, camisiparis or what other greenery you can find, boxwoods, magnolias. They're fantastic accent in container gardens. And because they're, they're going straight up, Instead of drooping, they make a great vertical accent when you're trying to get some height into one of those Christmas planters. Really a terrific plant. Yeah, I was curious. I don't, I don't know if you would know this just because you're, you know, a southern grower. But say, you know, someone up here in the north, you know, zone, you know, four to 
uh, whatever, seven or so. Some of these conifers are dormant right now, to my understanding. So I don't know, can you prune some off of your tree and use them now? Do you know? Well I do. I do that a lot, as a matter of fact. Um, I will go out into um, my gardens or my clients' gardens or even to the nurseries when they'll let me in, and I will cut off branches <laughs> of magnolias, blue spruces, oh, wow. uh, gold, gold mop cypresses. Oh, as long as you're not doing a severe pruning on the plant material, I think you're fine. And okay. uh, a, a few snipping of branches that are anywhere from 18 to 24 to 30 inches long. If you're only taking a few branches off of a tree, it's... It, I have never had any problem with the plant material itself suffering any kind of injury on okay. just taking a few limited branches for decorating. Great idea. Okay. Feeling Thank from you. your own yard. Yeah. <laughs> Free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nandina berries are another great Christmas plant. If you've got Nandinas in the landscape, they're usually loaded with berries this time of year. So that's another good one to, to snip on as well. All right, I'll have to make a list of some of these and include it in our in our notes. Um, yeah, I was wondering where you get all your material for these. I mean, they're they're beautiful. Do you get a lot of it from your own garden, or do you? Um, most of these are purchased because I need so much stuff for some of these planters. You'd be surprised how many evergreen boughs go into a basket like that. That one's about 36 inches high, and about 24 to 28 inches wide, and it's got some uh, camasipris in there, some pine. The long needle white pine, I cannot find that around here unless I purchase it from the nursery. So I buy bunches of evergreens and, and stuff them in pots of soil and uh, water them. And when you've got those fresh greenery boughs stuffed into soil and you water them like once a week, they will stay beautiful right on through the end of January, at least uh, where we are here. It, it, they, it's like a plant growing in that container with the boughs and about the end of January or so they start to show their wear and so we just take it all away. I, I take out some of the bows and, and the, those are red feathers in there that you see. So I'll take out some of the Christmas ornamentation and just leave the greenery and uh, those planters will look great from now until the end of January. Lots and of mileage out of some of those things. Yeah, you answered my, my other question. I was wondering, you know, how long do they do they last? So. I have found if you stick them in dirt, it's a they will last a long time. Might even, some of them might longer, start growing. Longer than in water. <laughs> right. Longer than in water, because they don't get you know the water doesn't get all moldy or anything. There's another one. There's another one using the same kind of greenery. Uh, this one I used uh, branches, uh, just branches from the garden actually, bare branches from the garden, and then I wired Christmas ornaments and little bits of moss onto the branches and stuffed those in the center. Different clients have different preferences. I have some clients that don't like any ornamentation on their planters whatsoever. They just want the greenery. Uh, some clients like lots of glitz and bling, so that's why there's a big difference in some of the planters. It just depends on what garden style my clients have and what they're decorating with for the season. This one's got some, looks like some more pine cones. Yeah, that's got those great big uh, West Coast pine cones in it. And this is for one of my clients who does not like to have any color, uh, not even bows or anything. And I've used some tallow berries in there. You can see on the lower left-hand side uh, that's got that lovely uh, white pine in there. This is actually a hydrangea that's planted in that pot. So we just I just stuffed a bunch of greenery in there and added pine cones and dried berries and there's some red dogwood twigs that I stuffed into the pot also. So the dried hydrangea blossoms are actually left over from the summertime. And this is a client that just likes just super natural greenery um, with no extra bling. She just likes to have the, the foliage in there and uh, any kind of dried berries that I can find that are natural berries. I'm curious if, um, well, I, I can't help but wonder, like, de like especially like where Adam lives, if the pine cones are bigger. Like, I find pine cones at the craft store or sometimes at the garden center, they're pretty expensive here where they're, you know, a good nine inches long or so. Um, are they like that where you are, Adam? Um, there are some out. Let's see what what kinds would be that big. I know I think they're sugar pines. There's some that are. If you find them, they're like 12 inches. I mean, they're huge. They're really some big ones. Out awesome. There. Yeah. See, we don't get those around here, to my understanding. 
<laughs> I don't do their but, brand. I have to purchase okay. those. Okay. I go online and I buy them like during the summertime when they're really cheap. <laughs> oh. So if you buy stuff in the off season, you can get really good deals on cases of them, and then you can have them. And it's like oh, it's like having a candy shop when you've got yeah. stores of pine cones or or dogwood branches and those kinds of things. So when you're buying in the off season, it means you have to buy them in advance, but then you sure. always have them on hand for virtually anything that you want to create. That's a great tip. We'll have to get that uh, website from you. Um, I know here I'll pull them and put them in a bucket in my shed in autumn um, just because if, if I go out and pick them now, you know, out of the mulch, well, first of all, usually we have snow covering it, so you wouldn't be able to find them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you can you know, I kind of let let them sit so they dry out a bit. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips or anything? Like if you were to collect your own pine cones, I think I that's a really good point. Is that I would definitely bring them in, try to pick them up off the ground, um, and then dry them in the garage or dry shed so that they can dry out, so that they they just stay a little cleaner and nicer for longer periods of time. My pine cones around here aren't very attractive, so I don't do that very often unless I can find little tiny ones, and then I'll use the little tiny ones. Um, and the planters that I do are so big, I kind of need to have those great big gorgeous cones from the West Coast. So those big cones that I use are, are brought in from the West Coast. But they're fabulous. Awesome. But these are, these are little cones here. <laughs> yes. Those yeah. actually are probably cones out of the yard because they are very yeah. small. And that's uh, just a, a bunch of uh, um, white birch logs that I tied together. And that is actually artificial greenery on there with some um, red ornaments. And so everything about that can be used from year to year. That's something that I put out on one of my clients' porches every year with, with one of her planters. So that does not... Um, that can be used over and over again. So combining things that you can use over and over again with those natural ingredients kind of helps you control the costs on some of those things. Mm. Great tip. Mm. This one looks like it in, has the hydrangeas again. <laughs> yes, that's for the yes. same client. She's yes. got a couple of these planters by her door, and those are tallow berries. The white berries are tallow berries, and I don't know what the black berries are. I'm sorry, I cannot remember what those black dried berries are. But again, we use the existing hydrangea in the pot and just dress it up with cones and berries and branches and uh, evergreen boughs. There's pine and camisipris and, and cypress in there. And uh, because it's sitting in a real planter, I just go in there and I water it once a week, and it looks gorgeous again till the end of January. Wow! So you get a lot of mileage out of some yeah. of those. Yeah, those containers are beautiful. You must have a great connection. <laughs> I've, I've got good sources for my plant material, but I do shop around. I find that the best way to get the best variety is to source out lots of different nurseries. And it takes more time, but it, it gives you a whole lot more to work with, and it makes you different than everybody else when you're resourcing from lots of different places. Sure. And then I'm assuming many of the containers are being um, reused by your clients? Like you mm -hmm. may come back and then yes, reuse them? I'll, okay. Right, right. So I'll, I'll go back in the spring, and we'll put in a bunch of summer annuals around them. Um, those particular planters with the hydrangeas have bulbs buried down beneath them, so those bulbs will start to come up in the spring again once the greener is removed. So I'm trying to keep some interest in those planters all year round as much as possible. So there's only a couple months out of the year where they're, you know, between the end of January and the middle of March where there's not a lot going on in the planters. But other than that, there's always something going on there. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's great. Um, Laura Flanders had a, a question. And so, hi, Laura. Um, says, Nancy, regarding the holiday planter with your client's hydrangea, are you saying that you simply stuck the greens and twigs and such into the dirt planter where the dormant dried hydrangea is planted? The greens last longer in dirt? Question? That's exactly right. That hydrangea stays in that planter year after year. And so we leave the, the blossoms on the hydrangea because my client loves that look of those dried hydrangeas. 
and then I literally just get big batches of, of greenery and stuff them in <laughs> to the dirt. I use the droopy ones um, around the, the outer perimeter and then start going inward with uh, some of the more upright materials like the branches and the pine needles and then I stick in the tallow berries and the red dogwood sticks and the pine cones at the very last. So you're kind of building it from the outside in and it's it does not bother the hydrangea in the least because the hydrangea is completely dormant. Hmm. Very good. Um, I was wondering so we had a question about just wondering about um, forcing bulbs and I know you do a lot with bulbs so maybe we could um, talk about that a little bit and also look at some more uh, of your photos. Sure. Um, one of my big bulbs that I force this time of the year is amaryllis and I, I do about 30 of them every um, season and I purchase them in August and get them in about late October. This year I was I'm the delinquent gardener this year. I was so busy. But I pot them all up, and when they start to bloom, which is around anytime between now and the end of um, December, I take those around and give them to my clients. And um, I just put each amaryllis bulb in a plain terracotta pot and uh, water it initially and then let it sit until it starts to develop buds and um, other kinds, other signs of growth, and uh, then once it starts to show signs of growth, I water it very lightly again, and the the stalks will get taller. Oh, these are hyacinths, actually. No, hyacinths are paper whites. Those might be paper whites in those, and those um, are actually in um, uh, hyacinth vases, and that is super easy. You just put the bulb in a little vase and fill it up with water, and they just start sprouting and going to town. And in about three weeks, all those little bulbs will have long stalks of flowers and uh, paper whites on them. And you can do that with hyacinths as well as paper whites. Um, you can force those by just sticking them in a little bit of water. You can put them in soil also. You can put them in a big pot with some soil and then kind of top dress the top of the pot with some moss. Tuck in some twigs and berries to make it look pretty until the bulbs start to come out. So... Lots of little tricks that you can do there, but I love the look of glass with um, hyacinth and paper white forcing. So I, I do a lot of this sort of thing for myself personally because I like I like it's just a fun thing to do. Jump down here. <laughs> There's one of the amaryllis um, pots that I do for my clients every year. Uh, for one of my clients, that same uh, vase is reused year after year after year, and that is one amaryllis bulb inside that pot and it has three huge stalks of um, amaryllis on it and they will last for uh, probably three weeks like that. If you don't water them too much, the secret is to water them very, very lightly. Are we still connected? <laughs> I can hear you. Oh, okay. I think we're good. Yeah, yeah we're just uh, we're just. Good. <laughs> Once they start blooming, once uh, just one last tip on the amaryllis. Once the amaryllis start blooming, water them very, very lightly because if you water them too heavily, those flowers absorb all that water and they completely collapse. So as soon as they start to bloom, cut back on the watering in a big way and just the scantest amount of water on them once a week and those things will last for weeks. That's the, the one thing that I have to warn my clients about is just don't water it and you'll be fine. <laughs> So you found that um, with the amaryllis, it's more the watering than the amount of light they get that uh, determines whether they get tall and floppy. Is that um, I, or is I have found that the they are, they grow best in in bright indirect light or in in dark or shaded rooms of the house. And initially, when they're setting those buds, they like to have some sunlight. But once they start to bloom, get them out of direct sunlight get them away from heater vents and cut back on your watering and um, they will just bloom and bloom and bloom last for a long time and you, you'll get one to three stalks on them and I sometimes have to stake them because they are so heavily laden with flower buds but um, uh, it's it's taken some finessing but I figured out the tricks to get these things to last for weeks during the holidays yeah, one of my beautiful. favorite things to do what about have you oh, seen this, this looks like citrus, is that right? Yes, 
Those are uh, some indoor uh, citrus uh, lemon trees and orange trees, and that's a great thing to grow indoors in the wintertime. They, they go outside in the summertime, but in the wintertime, at least here in Georgia, it's just too cold for them, so I bring them indoors and put them near a bright sunny window. Here you can see them. It's probably spring, um, and it's probably still a bit nippy outside, so they're still sitting indoors, but they'll go outside to live uh, in a bright sunny location without too much wind is the key to, at least here in Georgia, not too much wind on those citrus plants. Yeah, that makes that's a great gift for just oh, about it, anybody, I think. And up it, north it, here, I'm I'm noticing them in all the garden centers, even you know this time of year. Which you know, a few years ago, you asked for citrus shrubs or you know something you saw on online, and they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, and 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 they're very easy to grow. I have quite a few of my own. I, I actually keep mine out in the greenhouse, but mm -hmm. you can easily keep them indoors um, and then just bring them outside in the container. Great gift idea. Yeah. It really is. People people love getting them. And if, and if it comes in a, in a plain old plastic pot, you can just go buy a really nice small pot for less than $15 and it becomes a really special gift all of a sudden. Very cool. Yeah. Let's see, what else did we have on here? We had the potpourri. Yeah, that's a, a fun gift to oh, give to uh, as, a, as a hostess gift or a babysitter or, you know, a neighbor. Just assembling some things that you might even have around the house. There's some um, star anise in there and some rosebuds and some cinnamon and cloves. And I think there's some orange peel in there. There's lots of different recipes that you can find online for making uh, a dried potpourri. And if you find a pretty little vase that has little openings in it, and it just makes a really nice gift, and somebody can keep it on their vanity or in a guest room or in a bathroom, it's just something that a lot of people seem to love getting that as a gift. Yeah, that's a great Especially idea. Especially you plant yourself. Do you know, um, I'm not sure, do you, have you shared any of those recipes on your website? I, I don't know if I have or not, Bren. Uh, I probably have. I'm, I'll have to look. look and see. <laughs> and I probably just found okay. the recipe off of another link that I got. But um, okay. try okay. to take a look at what's in that bowl that you showed a picture of, and I will list all the ingredients that are in that yeah. um, for you to have. That's okay. I mean, we can find it. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of curious because you know our roses have been done for a few, you know, a few months now, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm wondering, like, how you would store, like, could could you, could you take the petals, you know, in the autumn? And I mean, I wonder if there, do you know any secrets of storing that so it could be used what during I the holidays? Have what I have done when I have not had to purchase rose petals is, because um, I cannot grow a lot of roses myself personally, but when I do have access to some, I'll s s dry them out on paper towels lightly covered with either, uh, or, or on, on parchment paper lightly covered with paper towels and kind of dry them in a cool, dry area till they s lose a lot of their moisture. And then I'll store them in a paper bag. The, the, okay. it, I think the key is letting them breathe so that they don't get all inside of a plastic bag. They can't breathe. So uh, storing them in a uh, paper bag with paper towels helps to kind of keep them fresh and, and just shake the bag every once in a while to keep them loose. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Well, I was wondering, let's see. Well, Bryn, do you want to give a shout out to our next week, um, next week's oh. show? Who do we have coming up? <laughs> yeah, I have to remind. <laughs> this is horrible. I forgot. <laughs> well, we have. Well, I remember. We have, uh, I'm Deborah. sorry. Deborah. Oh, duh! <laughs> I knew I'm that. So excited. It yeah, is, you knew that. Hey, you it's first. the holidays. I put you I on the spot. <laughs> I know. And I should know that because I'm excited. There are also some great people that we know online, just like Nancy Wallace. Um, yeah, we have Deborah Prinzine. Um, she used to be the uh, president of the Garden Writer Association. And uh, we also have um, Fran Soren, who I believe will be streaming from Israel 
um, mm. to share with us. Yeah, so both of the ladies will be sharing uh, tips and ideas on cut flowers. Um, so that that's going to be fun, Nancy. You have to join in. <laughs> I will try to do that. I will absolutely try to do that. My busy season is starting to wind down now, so I have a little bit more time now. It's not quite as frantic <laughs> as it was earlier in the season. Right. Is there ever free time when you're, I mean, you run your own business? <laughs> yeah, I'm always, there's always stuff that needs to be done, but January and February and July and August are normally quieter times, but that's when, of course, I'm doing all kinds of marketing stuff and paperwork and you know how it goes. Right. <laughs> so, you know, we, yeah. we kind of touched base on you are all over the place. You're on Twitter, um, the Instagram, I'm a big fan of the Instagram, just because you're a designer and your talent just shines on there. And well, um, if, if, some, yeah, if someone is... A way to post. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is the best way someone one, from our audience or who may be watching this presentation today, how could they get a hold of you, you know, to contact you about maybe designing? Um, yes, there. Uh, I think on my Instagram account, there's a link to my Facebook page, and if you go to my okay. Facebook page, there's a place where you can message me. And I've also got a website, wallacegardens.com, and if you go to the website, there's up in the top right-hand corner an email envelope. You just hit on that, and you can email me, and I think my, my phone number's on the website as well, so... It's pretty easy to track me down if you want to. <laughs> I've made it easy. Yeah. Yeah, and then so your Instagram also is Instagram slash Wallace Gardens Wallace Garden. with an S. Yeah, and I'm on there a lot because it's so easy for me to snap pictures yeah. while I'm out in the field it. doing whatever it is I'm doing and throw it up on the on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have do you do you have a um a favorite gift? You know, if someone maybe watching this presentation, what would you recommend someone giving a loved one this season? Well, I did actually make um, some terrariums uh, for a couple of my clients order terrariums from me every year, and it's not that difficult, and they are so spectacular when you uh, give them as a gift. And you can buy a glass vessel with a lid or without a lid, and I actually just made a couple of them today for one of my clients, and um, there's sort of a, a secret sauce recipe to, to layering the soil so that the plants last for a really long time. But if you take a, a terrarium to a mother-in-law or, or a daughter-in-law or, you know, your favorite babysitter or, you know, it, it's just a really special plant, especially if you've got a, a client or a friend or a family member who lives in, a, in an apartment and they can't have a garden. This is a great way to introduce plant material that's in a little enclosed vessel, lasts a long time, requires very little care. That's my probably my favorite Christmas gift is, is a handmade terrarium. That's fun. I know a couple of my local garden centers, they're actually having classes. So mm -hmm. what a great gift idea to invite your friend or your mother-in-law and go plant one up yourself at the garden center or, you know, something like that. Yeah, it's just having a few key ingredients on hand uh, is the key to success here on some of those things. Mm -hmm. I, I did a little drawing. Do you want me to show you the little drawing that I have that shows you the layers in the bottom of the terrarium? <laughs> it's it's kind of a kludgy illustration, but there are a couple of key ingredients yeah. like charcoal and sphagnum moss that um, mm -hmm. uh, all absorb water in the bottom of the terrarium and also help to keep any standing water that might be in the terrarium from from smelling bad because it's becomes uh -huh. you know sitting at the bottom of the pot or something. So there's a couple of ingredients okay. like adding charcoal and moss that will help absorb those extra uh -huh. that extra water so that if you okay. do accidentally overwater you won't kill the plants, which is important. Okay. You want to be able to keep it alive for a long time. <laughs> Yeah, those look fun. I mean, nice. you can just see all the, yeah. the things that are in there, little fir cones and gravel and moss, and it's like a little fairy little fairy land in there, it looks like. so. Oh. Okay. It's a port portable garden. Portable garden that you can keep on your tabletop without, you know, wrecking the coffee table or, or your furniture. Well, I wanted to do a quick shout-out to um, Emily Murphy. She tweeted and said she was uh, watching oh. and 
had a little bit of a hard time finding how to post a question. So again, if you're watching um, us on the video, and you can click right on the little arrow or the screen, and then once you're in there, you should be able to look up on the top right, and there's a little box up there, a um, little like three by three grid. And if you click that, you should see the question and answer um, option pop up. So it'd be great to hear from you. Also, I noticed that Lisa, um, Houseplant Guru, is uh, is on. And hi, Lisa. Yes, hi, Lisa. <laughs> and then, let's see, Laura said, um, in other words, you are using planters that you had from spring and summer. And then uh, she also said, I love learning that I could make holiday planters using my dormant potted plants. Absolutely. And I think that's fantastic because I keep walking by our 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 potted plants or containers out uh, on out the door on the walkway and they just look so sad right now and you know need a little cleaning up and it's like oh I could just uh, spruce them up with some evergreens that's a great idea <laughs> like you know it. it's actually a good thing to break up the root system sometimes of those plants growing in the pots yeah they don't become so condensed and I look at it as kind of like a way of root pruning actually going in there and stabbing them and, and one trick is if you have trouble getting the branches inside the dirt Get a long um, metal prod that's only like you know less than an eighth of an inch wide, uh, like a, a peony stake or something like that. And if you take it and you stick it inside the pot first, and then take your evergreen bough and follow that in there where you just poked a hole. Sometimes that uh, helps you penetrate the soil. And I forgot to mention that before because sometimes those root systems on those hydrangeas can be difficult to get the greenery in there. So use a peony stake or something like that to start that hole before you stuff your bow inside. Sounds like great, great. advice. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, let's see. Annie Haven says, waving from Southern California. Hi, Annie. Hi, Good Annie. <laughs> That's fun. Well, I just so appreciate you coming on, Nancy. It's been really, really fun to see all your great images and... Um, well, this is a great idea. I'm, I'm sh I've only been to a couple of these myself, so I'm looking forward to finding out more about the technology. And I think others are trying to figure it out too. So it's one of those things where, you know, once people know a little bit more about how to use it, it becomes less scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a great way to, to meet other people and just <laughs> yes. hang out. And we're still trying to figure it out ourselves. We're yeah. so you can talk to people <laughs> in Yeah. It's a great idea. <laughs> So, well, any um, <laughs> one have any closing thoughts, or as we can go ahead and wrap it yeah, up? Yeah, did oh. I look like a deer? <laughs> did I look like a deer in the headlines when you asked me? <laughs> That's the difference between Google Hangouts and Twitter, right? <laughs> but I think it's really cool to be able to see, um, you know, so many of the garden enthusiasts that we. Um, you know, communicate with yeah. on Twitter and Facebook. It's a great platform. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I get a lot of times when I tweet, come join us, contribute, I'll get, I don't have my hair brushed or, you know, I don't think they understand. Even, even if you're watching this presentation right now live, you know, just to um, comment in the question and answer section, just say hi. Um, it's a great way for us to connect with you, you know, because if you say hi, we can hit your picture and follow you on Google. And um, it's just really cool. <laughs> yeah, Emily says she found us. She says, found it. Thank you. Oh, Hello. Cool. <laughs> Love yeah. the crafty gardening <laughs> ideas, Nancy. You've inspired me to take indoor gardening to a oh, whole great. new level. Love it. Great. Well, so there's there's lots amazing. of photos, as Bren mentioned, in, and Bren has a great Instagram account, too. She's a bit of a foodie, as am I. So there are Lately. plenty of food photos on my Instagram account as well. <laughs> Just can't help ourselves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much again. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up. So I hope everyone is having a great evening, and come join us uh, next time. Well, all thanks, right. Adam. Thanks, Bran. It was my pleasure to be here, and, and I'm hoping to catch you all next week. Sounds like a fun time. All right. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Good night.